Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Jedi Man today. Jedi Man today? Jedi Man today. Hello. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Jedi Manda here, and today's video is going to be a little different. I want to make my cosplays more of a series in these videos instead of like a standard here's how a tutorial would make it, boom we're done. So I kind of want you guys to like follow me along on these builds because I want to post more, obviously, but my builds are not completed in a week. They take some time. But let's go ahead and talk about what I am here today to talk to you about, and that is historical corsets for cosplay. I know, I know I'm diving into a little bit of a gray area here with using the word historical because that is a term that sometimes judgment comes upon me for. But you know what? There's a lot of historical patterns out there for us to use to make outfits. And with cosplay, especially undergarments, looking into history is actually a really, really, really good um, place to research some of these shapes, some of the looks that history has given us with undergarments to help us achieve certain shapes for cosplay characters that has those certain shapes. I'm using shapes a lot. But I'm here to talk to you about using historical corsets. We're gonna make a historical corset and I'm gonna be using it for a cosplay. So I'm not necessarily using for a late Edwardian project like this pattern goes for. I'm using it for my next project, which is Yennefer of Vingerberg from The Witcher, specifically the Netflix series. I am making her final rope outfit gown. She wears in the finale when she shoots all that fire out of her hands, which is like the coolest thing ever. And I just really like my fire ladies, Daenerys, Yennefer, I like fire. But the first thing with this build is I want to do undergarments first. And I specifically have been eyeballing this pattern that I've had for a long time. And I think this is a really, really good shapewear corset to wear underneath a lot of different characters in cosplay. Specifically fantasy characters that do have a little bit of a historical background, but also I feel like this would work for a lot of different shapes um, in cosplay making with a lot of characters. If you would like to wear undergarments with your characters, especially in cosplay, totally can. You also totally don't have to. But learning how to make undergarments and wearing undergarments with your cosplays to get a certain shape does help that final look that you're ultimately trying to achieve. So why not dig into history and look a little bit into how the ladies of the Victorian age made their undergarments to go with cosplay? Why not? I am specifically, and I have been recently, researching a lot of Edwardian and late Edwardian undergarments to go with a lot of the costumes that I am going to be making in the future, which is of course Yennefer that I announced here and several of Danny's outfits later, and possibly some more gown making. I'm kind of moving away from the suits per se. Katana was kind of my last one that we talked about last week and Captain Marvel. I'm moving back into some gown making, mainly just I want some pretty gowns. So I'm going to be using Yennefer, especially this final dress look, as a good example on why historical undergarments can work for today's cosplay shapes. Now, yes, of course, a lot of the fantasy cosplay outfit character designs that we see do have a little bit of historical stuff built into them. I mean, a lot of Star Wars looks, a lot of Game of Thrones looks, like, yeah, I get it. However, Researching specifically how Edwardians made corsets will help you achieve those shapes that you want. This is the pattern that I'm going to be using. Yes, it is a McCall's pattern. Yes, it is a big four pattern. Yes, it's a store bought. But hush y'all don't care. It is a late Edwardian pattern from the magical Lady Angela Clayton. Shout out to her channel. I love this girl's channel. Please go check it out. She makes a lot, a lot of historical stuff and talks about it and shows you how to make it. She's a good person. Go check out her channel. But she also has this pattern, undergarments, for McCall's that we're going to make this corset out of. Now, of course, I'm not gonna make it out of standard white because I wanna have a little fun. So we're gonna do a corset with a little bit of fantasy, kind of a, a la Christine McConnell. If you don't know who that queen is, you should check her out. I'm gonna be doing some flossing, which I'll talk about in the video later when we start making this and turning them into spiders. And it's gonna be its gonna be a really cool looking corset instead of just standard white. Here's the fabric that I will be using for it. The outside fabric will be this Periwinkle Silk Dupioni from, uh, from Silk Baron that I have extra from 
the katana build uh, of her fans. So let's hope all of this will work for the corset. I think it will. It's awesome. We're using that. The lining I haven't figured out yet. I think we're probably gonna use this white for the lining. It is a cotille. For the interlining and the mock-up actually, I'm going to be showing you in this video some pretty cool tips and tricks on how to make some corsets if you've never made a corset. Specifically this one, this Edwardian looking one, which is longer, it's an underbust, it goes over the hips, it kind of gives you that beautiful hourglass shape. But I'll be giving some tips and tricks on what I've learned through the YouTubes, through reading, through research on how to make this outfit. I'm gonna be using black, um, this is canvas, black canvas, why can't I think of freaking fabric name, black canvas for the interlining or the lining. I haven't quite figured that yet, but we'll figure it out. Other materials that I got, busk, lacing, and research. <laughs> this one I book I've actually had for a long time. Highly recommend. There's a lot of really good patterns in here and a good read on how to make historical patterns. How to make historical corsets. As well as a plasti dip for me to, to dip my steel boning bits in. Um, a lot of people don't like to use steel boning now for corsets mainly because it's expensive, it's heavy, over time it's not that great, but I have a lot of it and that's what we're going to use. All right, so let's get into the build. Whoop, let's do this. Okay everybody, it's build time. So let's cut our fabric uh, first. So I am going to be using the cotille as the liner for the uh, this corset. So I will be cutting the cotille first and the black canvas for the mock-up. I will be following the directions for this corset loosely that come with the pattern, but ultimately I just bought this for the shape. So like I said, first thing you're gonna do, cut out your pattern pieces and then start to transfer the marks. Um, with using, when you're making corsets, you will be losing a lot of marks because you'll be doing a lot of ironing and touching and everything. So um, I tend to use a trace maker, dressmaker's tracing pattern bleh, to, to uh, trace the pattern marks onto my fabric and then go over them in a pencil um, because you are not going to be seeing ultimately, at least on the inside, the uh, pattern markings for this corset. So once you have the lining cut out, let's move to the canvas and I am going ahead and cutting out the canvas as you see here. So now it's the busk time right here. I am making markings where I need to uh, stitch my first seam for the right side of the busk and the left side of the busk right here. I am opening up the seam to remark because I did a mistake uh, where the right side of the busk will be. Um, if you've never sewn in buskas before for this corset, I would suggest searching for some videos here on YouTube that go into a little more depth. I just don't have time to go into depth about how to insert a corset for a, or a busk for a corset in this video because it is rather long. So I'm poking holes into the canvas to insert the left side of the busk here, as you can see. It's very important for the mock-up that you do insert the busks first and have them as a part of your mock-up. So right here, I'm going ahead and I'm lining up the busk, see if everything fits nice. And then I will be doing a stitch down the opposite side of the busk to keep it in place for the mock-up. Okay, so uh, let's insert a frame hold here. Um, a bit of a rookie mistake happened right now. I uh, did the <laughs> the corset the old bag lining way, and what I wanted to teach you guys in this video is how to do it in the double welt method that I got from the awesome Morgan Donner in her video on three ways to make a corset mock-up. Now, a double welt method is basically you are doing four layers um, I'm sorry, two layers, and then you are seaming them together with four layers and flipping them out, and it makes everything look really nice and neat and enclosed. No ragged edges on the outside, no anything like that, so you can easily do boning channels, um, and everything looks really nice and clean. So if you want some more information on how to do a double welt besides my general blabbing in this video, um, make sure you visit her video on it. She makes way more sense teaching you how to do it than I do, but it will become more evidence, uh, more evident as we move through the video and you can see what I'm doing. So let's get back to the video. So now that we touched on exactly what the double welt method is, watch me seam rip my entire corset apart and prepare to go back and do it again. Um, trust me, this method is pretty pretty awesome if you, uh, if you choose to do it for your corset builds. So once you have everything, well, me, once I have everything back open, here's how I do it. So you have your two layers, um, your front and your lining layer, 
go ahead and add the next layer that is going next to you, uh, next to those pieces over top of each other, right sides together and make a seam. Just sew all four of those pieces together and you will see how beautiful it lays out in the next scene that I show you when I am ironing it. So once you have your seam done, open it back up and then see how nice everything is enclosed because now that you have the seam on the outside, you can very easily put boning channels um, alongside your, uh, your foot when you're sewing and everything looks nice and clean. So go over to your iron, grab your iron and press everything to the opposite side that, uh, or basically to the side that you're going to add more on to. So everything is all the seams, um, all the seam allowances are going the right way on the inside. Press that nice and flat and then move on to your next pieces, doing exactly what you did prior by layering all four pieces together with all of your tracing marks matched up and then giving them a seam. So here's the thing that I kind of made up that I wanted to do to have your mock-up and have everything fit perfectly. You want to add your bones, you want to add your buskin, you also want to add your grommets and, and uh, eyelets in the back. So instead of actually damaging my fabric, which I know I'm going to add another layer to, I made basically a uh, grommet tape and I didn't have any of this on hand. You can buy it. I like uh, cosplay supplies or I'm sorry, corset supplies. Um, but what I did was I layered two layers of canvas marked where the grommets are going to go insert the grommets. And then I had a tape that I could just top stitch onto my corset and use it for the mock-up. Um, it worked out pretty great actually. I'm honestly not a huge fan of eyelets. I prefer grommets. I would suggest for you to use grommets. Eyelets sometimes can pick the fabric on the back and is kind of uncomfortable, but this is a really good way to use all of the ones that I had to make this beautiful multicolored um, eyelet tape. So now once I had the eyelet tape already, I went ahead and measured where I'm going to ultimately have the eyelets when it's finished on the back with a one inch turn under him on the back that I went ahead and folded under and stitched. And then I just did a simple top stitch seam. Uh, or I'm sorry, I just top stitched the eyelet tape onto the back to act as where it's supposed to go for the corset when it's done. Pretty cool, right? So now we're moving on to the boning and yes, you will need to add the boning to your mock-up because if you don't, it's not going to lay right on you. You're not going to get a appropriate measurements and alterations that you're going to ultimately want to do. So honestly, you're making pretty much the corset finished. <laughs> and then if you want to stop there, you can stop there. But I wanted to add that fabric and that silk fabric at the beginning. So once I had all of my steel bones cut out and measured and labeled for which channel they're going into, I stitched the channels. Keep in mind when you are stitching the channels, you will want to go a slightly bigger than the actual width of the bones because um, the fabric is thick and you don't want to be shoving the bones in there and then puckering too much on you. So now is the lacing time. So this took take, took forever. Um, I did the rabbit ears method for this, this corset, which you can see. Basically, I go halfway down. I stop and then do a loop down to the next eyelet instead of crossing over and doing um, an X an X motion like you can see right here. And that basically means you have a spot uh, to pull um, in your waist, which is going to be the smallest part of the corset. So you can tighten that the most and then tie it around your waist. Uh, you don't have to do this method, but um, it's also a lot simpler to put it on by yourself. I liked the rabbit ears method and it gets that waist nice and tight if that's what you're looking for. So continue watching me lacing up this whole damn thing and then tying it off at the bottom. I literally had to speed up this video 1000 times because it took this long to lace this corset. Edwardian corsets are very long, so it takes a lot of lacing. I think I had a total of five or seven yards of lacing for this, not too sure. Once you have it completely laced, tie it off at the bottom, make a little knot, and then go ahead and loosen it all up to ready for you to go ahead and try the mock-up on.
So once I had it all laced up, it's trying on time. So I put on my nice taco shirt and tried it on. Um, it worked really, really nice. I was expecting to make it shorter or um, not necessarily longer, but I really liked the length of the corset. Uh, the only alterations that I did do was take the bust in because I just don't have big boobies. So I had to take it in where I'm pinching it right there. And then I ultimately decided to take it in more in the back because I didn't like that it was closing up too much. I wanted this corset to work with multiple sizes with my weight kind of fluctuating all over the place. So I ended up taking two inches off the back on both sides and then taking one inch on the, um, the side front seam in, uh, uh, one inch total on each side uh, for the alterations. But honestly, I was very surprised with the lack of alterations that I needed to do for this corset. I was very happy with it. So once I had uh, my alterations all figured out with my mock-up, I transferred the alterations to paper, make sure I had everything down that I wanted to do. And then we got to cutting on the next piece. But let's say a little prayer for my twill tape because, or not my twill tape, my eyelet tape, because ultimately those eyelets kind of popped out of there. But you know what? They worked perfectly for the time for what they needed to do. So I went ahead and took everything apart. And now I'm going to be cutting the silk with the same measurements. After I did the alterations for the pieces, I went ahead and cut the silk with the um, canvas, and then I will flatline those together. Here's some nice uh, rotary cutter slicing that I like to do because my rotary colors are just so cool. So here's a fun tip. If you have a lot of extra little um, threads hanging off for when you seam drip your entire corset off, take some duct tape, wrap it around your hand and just roll over the roll over the fabric pieces and that will pick up all of the extra little thread bits that you have hanging off there without you having to painstakingly pull them out every five seconds. So by this point in time, you pretty much know how to do the double welt method. Go ahead and do the exact same thing now that you have your fashion fabric or your outer fabric attached to your inner lining. I flatlined them together and then surged all of the pieces, made the edges nice and neat, and went ahead and just did the whole method one more time. So I remarked where I'm going to be putting my busk, insert my busk, and then continue on using the double welt method to add the pieces to the rest of the corset. So now we are at the stage where I'm using this plasti dip, which is literally plastic dip, to finish the edges of my steel bones. I didn't have any of the caps, um, so this worked out pretty great um, for it. I suggest if you do this method, you dip them two or three times each end, and it is to prevent those really sharp edges of the steel, of the spiral steel boning to poke through your corset because that, that wouldn't feel too good. So now that those, ends were dipped and ready to go. I make sure I measured a little bit wider now that I have another piece of fabric and those edges are a little bit thicker for my boning channels that I am putting in right here. Sorry for the shaky camera, guys. Jeez, what's going on, Amanda? Yikes, it's like freaking Blair Witch Project up in here. My apologies. <laughs> So here's a fun short segment of watching me try to force these bones into the channels that they're supposed to be. Some of the channels got a little tight on me, but 
Eh, that's okay. So now once you have the bones inserted all your channels, go ahead and make a boning channel for your center back that you will need um, before you insert your eyelets or grommets to make that corset back. So here comes my least favorite part, of course, making inserting eyelets. They suck. So I do eyelets every one inch apart, leaving one inch further down from the top and two inches from the bottom. Uh, this You don't necessarily need to have eyelets all the way down at the bottom. I did just for the sake of look, but um, I am using a leather punch here to put holes into this because it's really thick right now. It's several layers I'm trying to go through and then putting the eyelet in and then using the eyelet setter for that. So I highly suggest grommets, guys. Uh, they just look so much better and they, but you know, you gotta use your stash when you gotta use your stash, right? <laughs> We're all in quarantine. <laughs> but this is one, this is one method I just, I, I, I can't stand this. But now this is something that I love, binding. I am using some super wide binding for this because I want at least a half an inch to be seen on the outside and more than a half an inch to be on the inside to where I can um, hand stitch it closed because I really liked that the black look for the, uh, the binding. So I am stitching about more than a half inch away from the top, setting the binding, and then I will turn the binding under and hand stitch it together using a stitch called a catch stitch, which is I will show you right here. Sometimes I'm really bad at explaining things, but ultimately this is a catch stitch. So if you wanna know more about how to do it appropriately, I would suggest to look up a YouTube about it. But a catch stitch is a stitch that you uh, use for the insides of jackets and corsets to basically bind something or, or stitch something down that's gonna have some movement to it. When you put things under a machine and you hand and you sew them through the machine that really kind of nails it into place. With this catch stitch, I'm actually making little X's along the line of the of the edge of the binding and my lining on the inside to where it is stitching it down but it's allowing that movement a little bit more within the binding so it's if if it were to move a little bit on me um, that's okay it's still gonna stay and it also looks really really nice it makes these tiny little X's all along all along the binding but it's something I learned when I worked in theater and uh, it's really handy for stuff that is really close to you uh, of course it's specifically I used it for um, hemming a lot of things and it's just a nice little stitch to do. So get a good close look at this stitch. It is called a catch stitch. So if you would like to do this, um, I really find it handy for binding corsets. We are almost done everybody. So we have the binding all done. Now I'm gonna be decorating the top part of my corset with some spider web trim that I found. Like I said earlier in the video, I wanted to do some a witchy Halloween spider vibe for this corset. So I found this, um, this fun stuff in my stash and I am taking my rotary cutter all across the front and doing a very organic slice and dice method to where it comes out looking kind of raggy, kind of old and that, and just like some spider web. And I also found another bit of spider web uh, material in my stash that I layered underneath of it to give it more of an old spider web antique vibe for this corset. I really dug this look. I thought it was really, really super cool. So once I had the trim completed, I went ahead and pinned it or clipped it to the top part of my corset to see if I really liked it, and then used an extra long, extra wide zigzag stitch to stitch it to the top of my corset. The last thing I did was stitch some ribbon to the top so that gap can close when I tie it into a nice little bow. So guys, it's time for the reveal.
So here it is. I am very happy with how it turned out. I think this will be perfect for Unifer and other cosplays that I do. So Edorian corsets. A couple of things I would have done differently or what I'm going to be doing. Um, we didn't cover the flossing of the corset in this video. That'll be another video. And I think I'm gonna make a back modesty panel for this just because there is a bit of a big gap in the back and I'm not sure if I like it that much, but it'll be okay. I don't necessarily like the gap huge in the front here. I thought the ribbon would kind of take care of that, but it's not really doing that. So I think I'm going to put a hook and eye bar to get that closed, plus keep the ribbon there because I think the ribbon's cute. Man, my face is so flustered. Putting on this corset to claw it out of me. But all in all, I think this is a great corset for cosplay. Um, definitely be looking into historical stuff, ladies and gents, if you want to make a beautiful undergarment underneath your cosplay. They know what they're talking about. I really do love the slight witchy vibe I have with this, um, with all the spider webbing up here and plus the corset flossing that we're gonna do in the next video on the bones. Hopefully making little spiders. We'll see if that works, but I am digging my witchy vibe Edwardian corset. All in all, I give this project an A. There's some things I would have done differently, probably done synthetic whale boning instead of spiral, but that's all I had. Like I said, this was a complete stash build. <laughs> So I didn't really go out and get anything for this. So, well, besides I did buy the busk. Yeah, got that and the lacing. I think this was a really fun build to do during quarantine. I kind of think corsets are one of the perfect projects to do during quarantine. It definitely keeps your mind focused. It's not too outlandish with fittings and mock-ups and curves and anything like that. Everything's really straightforward. Honestly, if you're looking for a fun sewing project to do that you know you're gonna be using later, Highly recommend the corset, or at least this type of Edwardian corset. All right guys, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for joining me on my historical corset for cosplay build. My next big build is going to be Yennefer. That might not be next week's video. She's probably gonna take a hot minute, so yeah. If you would like to see more builds like this, more historical stuff I can dive into, let me know in the comments below. I'm not really a historical costumer, but I am looking way more into a lot of those shapes and designs and techniques to do for my cosplays, and who knows, I might pop out some kind of beautiful robe a la Frances, like, in a month or two. Who knows? Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I post cosplay videos every week, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!